The Life and Death of Julius Caesar, Act 1, Scene 1, Rome, A Street, Flavius, responds, Hence, home, you idle creatures, you get home, is this a holiday? What? No, you not, being mechanical, you ought not walk upon the laboring day, without the sign of your profession, speak, what trade art thou? First commoner. Why, sir, a carpenter, Morales, replies, Where is thy leather ipron, thy rule? Thou dost the best apparel on you, sir, what trade are you? Second commoner, truly, sir, in respect of a fine workman, I am but, as you would say, a cobbler, Morales responds, By what trade art thou? Answer me directly, second commoner replies, A trade, sir that I hope I may use with a safe conscience, which is indeed, sir, a member of bad souls. Morris replies, What trade how thou? Thou naughty knave, what trade? Second commoner replies, Nay, I beseech you, sir, but not out with me yet. If you out, be out, sir, I can mend you. Morris replies, What meanest thou by that? Mend me, thou saucy fellow. Second commoner replies, Why, sir, cobble you? Flavius replies, Thou art our cobbler, art thou? Second commoner replies, Truly, sir, all that I live by is with all. I meddle with no tradesmen's matters, nor women's matters, but all. I indeed, sir, a surgeon to all choose. When they are in great danger, I recover them as proper men as ever tread upon. Neat's leather have gone upon my handy work. Flavius responds, But what therefore are thine eyes shop today? Why does us lead the men about the streets? Second commoner replies, Truly, sir, to wear out their souls, to get myself into more work. But indeed, sir, we will make holiday to see Trump, to rejoice in his triumph. Marius replies, Why therefore rejoice? What conquest brings he home? What tributaries follow him to Rome? To grace in captive bonds his chariot's wheels. You blocks, you stones, you worst and senseless things. Oh, you hard hearts, you cruel men of Rome. Know you not Pompey many a time of if. You had climbed up to walls and battlements, to towers and windows, ye to chimney tops, your infants in your arms, and there have, have set a long-lived day with patient expectation to see great Pompey pass the streets of Rome. And when you saw his chariot but appear, have you not made an universal sound that Tiber tremble underneath her banks to hear the replications of your sounds made in her concoive shores? And do you now put on your best attire? And do you now call out the holiday? And do you now, strew fellows in the way, that come and triumph over Pompey's blood, be gone. Run to your houses, fall upon your knees, pray to the gods to intermit the plague that needs must light on you into regret. Flavius responds, Go, good countrymen, and for this fault assemble all the poor men of your sort. Draw them to the tiger banks and weep your tears into the channel to the lowest stream. Do kiss the exiled shores of all. Exalt all the commoners. See whether the best metal be not moved. They vaunish tongue tied in their guiltiness. Go you down ways towards the capital. This way will I disrobe the images. If you do find them, deck them with ceremonies. Marius replies. Way we do so. You know it, the Feast of Lupercha, Flavius replies. It is no matter. Let no images be hung with Caesar's trophies. I'll about and drive away the vulgar from the streets. So do you, too, where you perceive them thick. These growing feathers plucked from Caesar's wings will make him fly in ordinary pitch. Who else would soar above the view of men and keep us all in several fearfulness? Exalt, scene two, a public place. 
Caesar replies. Caponia, Cassia replies. Peace, hoy speaker, Caesar speaks. Caesar replies. Caponia, Caponia replies. Here, my lord, Caesar replies. Stand you directly in Antonius' way. When he doth run his course, Antonius, Anthony replies. Caesar, my lord, Caesar replies. Forget not in your speed, Antonius, to touch Calponia, for our elders say the baron touched in this holy chest shake off their sterile curse. Anthony replies. I shall remember, then Caesar says, do this, it is performed. Caesar replies. Set on and leave no ceremony, ceremony out. Soothsayer. Caesar! Caesar replies, Ha! Who calls? Casca replies, Bid everyone noise be still. Peace yet again. Caesar replies, Who is it in the press that calls on me? I hear a tongue, shriller than all the music. Cries, Caesar! Speak! Caesar turned to hear. Soothsayer replies, Beware the eyes of March. Caesar replies, What man is that? Brutus replies, A soothsayer bids you wear the Ides of March. Caesar replies, Set him before me. Let me see his face. Cassius replies, Fellow, come a throng. Look upon Caesar. Caesar replies, What say else now to me? Speak once again. Soothsayer replies, Beware the eyes of March. Caesar replies, he is a dreamer. Let us leave him. Pass. Cascus replies, Will you go see the order of the course? Brutus, not I. Cassius replies, I pray you do. Brutus replies, I am not gamesome. I do lack some part of that quick spirit that is in Antony. Let me not hinder, Cassius, your desires. I'll leave you. Cassius replies, Brutus, I do observe you now of late. I have not from your eyes that gentleness and show of love I was wont to have. You bear too stubborn, too strange of a hand over your friend that loves you. Brutus replies, Cassius, be not deceived. If I have viewed my look, I turn the trouble of my conscience merely upon myself. Vexed I am. Of late with passions of some difference, conceptions only proper to myself, which gives some soil perhaps to my behaviors. Let not therefore my good friends be grieved, among which numbers Cassius be you one, nor constitute any further my neglect than that poor Rutus with himself at war, forgets the show of love to other men. Cassius replies, Then Brutus, I have much mistook your passion. By what means, therefore, this breast of mine hath buried? Thoughts of great value, worthy conduits. Tell me, good Brutus, can you see your face? Brutus replies, No, Cassius, for the eyes see not itself, but by reflection, by some other things. Cassius replies, Tis just, and is just very much laminated. Brutus that you have no such mirrors as will turn? Your hidden worthiness in your eyes? That you might see your shadow? I have heard, where many of the best respect in Rome, except the mortal Caesar, speaking of Brutus, and groaning underneath his age's yoke, have wished that noble Brutus had his same eyes. Brutus replies, Into the dangers would you lead me, Cassius, that you... Have me seek into myself for that which is not in me, Cassius replies. Therefore, good Brutus, be prepared to hear, and since you know you cannot yourself so well as by reflection, I, your glass, will modestly discover yourself that of yourself which you yet know not of, and not be jealous on me, gentle Brutus, where I, a common laughter, or did use to stale with ordinary oaths my love to every new 
prosper if you knew that I fawn on men and hung them hard, and after scandal them, or if you know that I profess myself in banqueting to all the rout, then hold on me dangerously. Caesar, Caesar, Brutus responds. What means the shouting? I do fear the people choose Caesar for their king. Cassius replies, Aye, do you fear it? Then must I think you would not have it so? Brutus replies, I would not, Cassius, yet I love him well. But wherefore do you hold me here so long? What is it you would impart me? If it be aught toward the general good, set honor in one eye, and death all the other. And I will look on both indifferently, for let the gods so speed me as I love the name of honor more than I fear death. Cassius replies, I know that virtue to be in you, Brutus, as well as I know your outward flavor. Well, honor is the subject of my story. I cannot tell you and other men think of this life, but for myself, single, I had leaf not left been to be left on. I all of such a thing as myself. I was born free of Caesar, so were you. We both have fed as well, and we can both endure the winter's cold as well as he. For once, upon a raw and gusty day, the troubled Tiber chafer with her shores. Caesar said to me, Darest thou, Sassius, now leap into with me into this angry flood and swim to yonder point upon the word. According as I was, I plunged in and bade him fellow. So indeed he did, the torrent roared, and we did buffet it with lusty sinews, throwing it aside and streaming it with hearts of controversy, but ere we could apprive the point proposed, Caesar cried, Help me, Cassius, or I will sink, as is Arrhenius, our great ancestor, did from the flames of Troy upon his shoulder, the Arcisius bear from the waves of Tiber, did I the tired Caesar, this man is now become a god, and the Cassius is a wretched creature and must bend his body, if Caesar carelessly but not on him. He had a fever when I saw him in Spain, and when the fit of him I did mark how he did shake, tis true, this good god did shake. His coward lips did from the color fly, and the same eye which bent doth all the world did lose his luster. I did hear him groan, ah, that tongue of his that bad the Romans, mark him and write the speeches in their books. Alas, it cried, give me some drink, Tinius, as a sick girl, ye gods, it does amaze a man such as feeble temper should so get the start of a majestic world and the bear the palm alone. Caesar, another general shout, I do believe their applause are for some new honors that are heaped on Caesar, Cassius replies. Why, man, he doth bestride the narrow world like a colossus, and we petty men walk under these huge legs and weep about to find ourselves dishonorable graves. Men at some time are masters of their own fates. The fault, dear Brutus, is not in our stars, but in ourselves, that we are underlings, Brutus and Caesar. What should be that Caesar? Why should that name be sounded more than yours? Write them together. Yours is just as fair name. Sound them. It doth become the mouth as well. Weight them. It is as heavily conjure with them. Brutus will start a spirit as soon as Caesar. Now in the same names of the gods of once, once upon Memphis our Caesar fed, that he is grown so great. Age, thou art shamed. Rome, thou hast lost the breed of noble bloods, when then, when, thereby age since great floods, but it was framed 
with more than just one man. When could they say till now, I walked, I talked of Rome, why her walls encompassed but one man. Now it is Rome indeed, and room enough where it is but one man. O oh, you, I have heard our father say, there was a Brutus once that would have brooked the eternal devil to keep his state in Rome as easily as a king, Brutus replies. That you do love me, I am nothing jealous. What you work, what you need, what you need is what you work for me. I have some aim. How have I thought of this and these times? I shall recount, therefore, this present. I would not, so with love I might entreat you. But any further moved, what have said? I will consider what you have said. I will be patient here and find time, both meet to hear and answer such high things. Till then, my noble friend, chew upon this. Brutus had rather be a villager to then repute himself a son of Rome. Under these hard conditions as this time, it is like to lay upon us. Cassius replies, I am glad that my weak words have struck but thus much show of fire from Brutus. Brutus replies, The games are done, and Caesar is returning. Cassius replies, As they pass by, pluck Cassia by the sleeve, and he will, after his sour fashion, tell you what hath proceed worthy note today. Brutus replies, I do so, but look, you, Cassius, the angry spot doth grow on Caesar's brow, and all the rest look like a chidden train. Calponius cheek is pale, and Cicero looks with such ferret and such fiery eyes as we have seen him in the capital being crossed in conference by some senators. Cassius replies, Casca will tell us what the matter is. Caesar, Antonius. Anthony replies, Caesar, let me have men about me that are fat, sleet-headed men, and such as sleep o nights. Yon Cassius has a lean and hungry look. He thinks too much. Such men are dangerous, Anthony replies. Fear him not, Caesar. He's not dangerous. He is a noble Roman, a well-given, Caesar replies. Would he were fatter, but I fear him not. Yet if in my name were liberal to fear, I do not know the man I should avoid. So such as the spare Cassius, he reads much. He is a great observer, and he looks quiet through the deeds of men. He loves no plays, and thou dost, Anthony, here he knows music. Seldom he smiles and smiles in such a sort as if he mocked himself and scorned his spirit, that would be moved to smile to anything, such men as he be never at heart's ease, whilst they behold a greater than themselves, and therefore are very dangerous. I rather tell thee what is to be feared than what I fear, for always I am Caesar. Come on my very hand, for this ear is death, and tell me truly what thou thinks of him. Casca replies, You pull me by the cloak. Would you speak with me? Brutus replies, I, Cacus, tell us what hath has chanced that day. That Caesar looks so sad. Why were you with him? Were they not? I should not then ask Caesar. Casca had. Casca replies, why there was a crown offered him, and being offered him, he put it by with the back of his hand, thus, and then the people fell, shouting, Brutus, what was the second noise for? Casca replies, 